I know, the weather in your hometown is downright uninhabitable. The scorching heat waves and the annual typhoonic deluges and snow deep enough to bury a corn silo. The bad news is planet Earth is the only habitable place we know of in the entire universe. Also, are the Niberians suffering from Niberian-made climate change? Only Niberian Al Gore can answer that question. We as a species are interested in habitability for an assortment of reasons, political, financial, humanitarian, and scientific. We want to understand how our own climate is changing, how we'll live in the climate of the future, and what we can do to stem the tide of what our carbon consumption causes. There could be agendas to push for cleaner energy sources, or driving politicians towards climate change denial to maintain nefarious financial gain. We also might need a new lily pad to jump to, assuming we can sort out the travel obstacles. The thing that interests me personally the most is, when can I see an alien? The habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone, is the region around a star where the average temperature on a planet allows for liquid water with which to make porridge. It's that liquid water that we hunt for, not only for our future uses, but as an indicator of where alien life could be in the universe. Problems outside this range are pretty obvious too hot. It's a perpetual steam bath where it produces separate piles of hydrogen and oxygen and then your oxygen combines with carbon to form carbon dioxide and then the hydrogen just buggers off into space. This is what happened with Venus. If the planet is too cold, then bodies of water are solid skating rinks. There could be pockets of liquid water deep beneath the icy surface, but overall they're bad places to live. We got this on Mars and the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The habitable zone is a rough measurement. It's a place where liquid water might exist. Unfortunately, it's not just a simple equation of the distance to the star versus the amount of energy output. The atmosphere of the planet matters a lot. In fact, both Venus and Mars are considered to be within the solar system's habitable zone. Venusian atmosphere is so thick with carbon dioxide that it traps energy from the sun and creates an inhospitable oven of heat that would quick boil any life faster than you can say, pass the garlic butter. It's the opposite on Mars. The thin atmosphere won't trap any heat at all, so the planet is bun-chillingly cold. Upgrade the atmospheres of either planet and you could get worlds which would be perfectly reasonable to live on. Maybe we should bash them together and we could spill the atmosphere of one onto the other. Tell Black Bolt to ring up Franklin Richards, I have an idea. Now when we look at other worlds in the Milky Way and wonder if they have life, it's not just enough to just check to see if they're in the habitable zone. We need to know what shape their atmosphere is in. And astronomers have actually discovered planets located in the habitable zones around other stars. From what we can tell, they're probably not places you want to live. They're orbiting red dwarf stars. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. We live in a red tinted landscape, provided it came with an Angelo Badalamenti soundtrack. Red dwarf stars are extremely violent in their youth. They blast out enormous solar flares and coronal mass ejections. These would scour the surface of any planets caught orbiting them, close enough for liquid water to be present. There is some hope. After a few hundred million years of high activity, these red dwarf stars settle down and sip away at their fuel reserves of hydrogen for potentially trillions of years. So if life can hold on long enough to get through the early stages, it might have a long existence ahead of it. So when we think about a new home among the stars, we're trying to seek out new life in the universe, look for planets in the habitable zone. As we've seen, it's only a rough guideline. You probably want to check out the place first and make sure it's truly livable before you commit to a timeshare condo around Gliza 581. Do you think habitable planets are common in the Milky Way? Tell us what your perfect planet environment might be in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. We'd like to thank Kimball Service and Ronald Martin Kosky and the rest of the members who support us in making great space astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. 
provided it came with an Angelou Badalamenti. Uh, Badalamenti? Badalamenti? Badalamenti. Badalamenti. Angelo? Angelo Badalamenti.